Hello Flight Simmers, welcome once again to another tutorial. This will be the first episode of another series, this time on a bigger aircraft that many beginners are eager to fly, the Airbus A320. In this series, I'll do my very best to impart knowledge on flying the Airbus A320 to absolute beginners on the game. So everything has to be very simplified just so you can enjoy playing the game realistically without getting rid of the fun. Bear in mind that everything taught here should not be applied to real life. However, we will try to remain as close to the real thing as possible. Stay tuned! For this series, we'll be flying the Airbus A320 in the new Lufthansa livery. We'll be flying from Flughafen Frankfurt Main all the way to Hamburg Airport in Hamburg, Germany. The entire flight time will take about 1 hour and 5 minutes, but since the series is chopped down into segments, it won't take that long. Without any further ado, let's get started. We are now inside the flight deck of the aircraft. At first glance, it looks so intimidating with all those buttons and switches and levers and whatnot. But trust me, it's not that hard to understand all of them. To put that into perspective, everything here is for the pilot and everything over there is for the co-pilot. To make things even simpler, we can divide the flight deck into parts or panels. The overhead panel up there, the FCU, the instrument panel, the MCDU, and the pedestal. That's it. As you can see, the aircraft is totally shut down. Nothing is turned on, nothing is lighting up whatsoever. The aircraft is in what we call a cold and dark state. Just like in our Cessna, first thing we gotta do upon entering the cockpit is make sure that the parking brakes are on. For the Airbus, the parking brake is on the back part of the pedestal, right here. This is the off position, this is the on position. When you're not going anywhere, it's best to keep the parking brakes to on. Now, to give life to our aircraft, we have to go up to our overhead panel and somewhere in the middle is the electrical panel. Here you will find the battery switches. A320 has two batteries. Turn both of them on and your aircraft comes to life. 25.4 volts from each battery. Now, just like in your car, if you leave your battery on without anything charging it, the battery will eventually drain. So that's why we have to turn the external power on. External power is usually provided by ground power unit or GPU such as this one. It's kind of like a power generator for your aircraft. Most, if not all, airports have this. When a GPU is connected to your aircraft, the green light avail should be on. So we turn it on. Note that the generator 1 and generator 2 buttons indicate fault simply because the engines are not yet started to give power to the generators, so nothing to worry about. Now that our aircraft is alive, we go down to our lights panel and turn on the nav lights, turn the strobe lights to auto, and turn the no smoking signs to on. That's it for now. Normally, the A320 checklist has a specified flow of things to do. In the overhead panel, the pilot has to check from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Unfortunately, not everything is simulated in the game, except for a few buttons and switches. So if we follow the flow of the checklist, we stop here to the first thing that actually works in the game, which is the fuel pumps. So what we have to do now is turn the left pumps on, the center pumps on, and the right pumps on. And continuing on with the flow, we're already done with the electricals and lights, we go directly to the APU. Turn the APU master switch to on and after 3 seconds, press the start button. The APU or auxiliary power unit is a small turbine engine at the back of the aircraft. What it does is it gives electrical power and pneumatic power or air pressure when the engines are not running. That being said, it has its own electrical generator and pneumatic pump that gives air needed for things like engine start and air conditioning. Once the APU is ready, the green avail light will turn on by itself, after which we go up here and turn on the APU bleed. And voila! 
we can hear air coming out from the air conditioner. Now, our aircraft is fully powered, except for the engines, of course. One thing you might be interested in is you can actually adjust the brightness of your displays by turning some knobs here. The co-pilot has his own knobs over to his side. As for the engine display and the system's display, their brightness can be adjusted with these knobs down here. Meanwhile, there are also knobs for the integration lights, those illuminated lines and texts all over the cockpit, and floodlights, which give beautiful ambience to your instrument panel. So much for the lights, let's move on to the FCU or the flight control unit. These are basically the controls to your autopilot. We're not doing anything here for now, except for the QNH or barometric pressure at sea level that we need to properly calibrate the altimeter. In this case, the weather today has 29.92 inches of mercury at sea level, so we set it here to 29.92. We can also do the same going down here to the backup attitude indicator by turning this knob, and then go back to the FCU and turn the flight director on. Another thing to note about the FCU is that it also contains the controls to your nav display. This is yours, and this is for the co-pilot. I will be discussing this in detail on the next episode. But for now, let's continue on with the rest of our procedure. Check if your landing gear lever is down and the landing gear lights are on green. Also, check if your auto brakes are off. No lights means off. Going down to the pedestal, you'll find your radios. Again, one is for you and the other one is for the co-pilot. There are two frequencies on display here. One is active, the other is standby. We can only change the standby frequency. To change the decimal number, turn the inner knob. To change the whole number, turn the outer knob. After that, press this button right here so that the frequency that you've just changed will switch places to the active. Once you're done with setting up the radio, check if your throttle quadrant is all the way back to idle. Check your engine switches are set to off and your engine mode selector is set to normal. Once you're done with that, move on to the back part of the pedestal and check if the speed brakes are disarmed. Pull to arm, push it in to disarm. And also, check if the flaps are retracted. That's it. Our aircraft is now ready for flight. On the next episode, we will be going through the Multifunction Control Display Unit or MCDU, how to program your flights, your routes, and everything else into it. This has been Marty and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.